Okay, here we are, guys. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, for those of you who uh, do not know who I am, my name is Nicole Cabe, and I am a three-star qualifying coach with Beachbody, and I was asked by Jen Greenberg to host tonight's call. And so I want to thank um, Scotty Hobbs, of course, and um, Jen for thinking of me. However, I have been completely stressed and totally nervous about doing this because I've never hosted before, and I've only um, been a guest on Fit for Life team one time. And that didn't go so well because it crashed and then we had to jump onto bombshell and it was kind of crazy. So hopefully we will not have that happen tonight. And uh, I would just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And if Scotty Hobbs asks anybody to be a host on his call, you know, for his call, you wouldn't, would you say no? I don't think so. I don't think so. So anyway, um, thank you for that. And I want to give a quick shout out to Sandy Tachi, and I don't know if she's on yet or not, but I had some major issues with uh, my PowerPoint at noon today, and she hooked me up, and I, I got my present my slides uploaded. So they're not very spectacular, as I just learned a pick monkey last night and kind kind of started using it. I was up till one o'clock in the morning trying to design some fancy schmancy things because everybody on these calls have such great, um, you know, presentations and slides. And I thought, you know what, it is what it is, and it, it it's not about this slide. It's about what I'm going to say to you, I guess, and what's important just like it's not what a person wears, it's what's on the inside. So I want to tell her thank you so much because I think my blood pressure was ready, I was ready to be taken to the ER until she saved me. So I just want to say thank you to her. Um, and I am going to start off, one other thing I wanted to say about Monday night's call. If anybody, did anybody, watch Monday night's call with Jennifer and um, Kelly. We have our Fit for Life team call. It, that didn't work out, so we jumped on the bombshell call. And let me tell you, amazing, amazing, amazing. I don't know how anyone could not have been, could not relate somehow to what both, either one of the girls were saying. It was absolutely amazing. I highly suggest you finding it and, and watching it. I cannot wait to meet those two. I, I hope to meet them maybe at, at leadership. If not, I will hunt them down next year in Nashville. And I will definitely introduce myself to them as they are amazing. And I did friend request them and they accepted my request. So I was excited about that. Anyway. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Here is my story. And I don't know how many of you actually, most of you that are on here, I believe, you know, know my story. I decided to tell this story because the point was I was on another team call and a lot of the other team members don't know who I am. So here it is. And I'm going to get through this without crying because... If anybody saw when I told my story on Fit for Life, I bawled hysterically. And I'm in a much better place now. So, in October of 2011, I had my grandmother pass away from cancer. I know that we all have had family members that we've lost. I lost my father at a very he was very young, um, 12 years ago I lost him. I lost my other grandmother six weeks after that. But somehow this affected me much more differently for some reason, which I found out later um, was a very um, key reason. But anyway, that was October of 2011. I spent the day that she passed away thinking about a lot of things and 
I decided at that time that I need to make some, some different changes in my life, some different choices. You know, how, how can I better, how can I improve my life? So I decided to start running at age 41 and gave up some other habits and tried to shed the 30 pounds that I had gained in the last several years prior to that. And six months later, I ran a half marathon in Chicago with 15,000 runners. And it was amazing. And I will never forget it. I believed my grandmother carried me the last four miles of the race because I truly felt she was with me. After that, I focused on running and racing. And a year and a half of, there I am, I did my first sprint try in a, another half marathon, my friend Kathy Chenier, my coach. I spent a year and a half racing and driving myself to to a place where I didn't know at the time was not a great place. I, I realized after um, this pivotal moment that I have somewhat of an addic addictive personality and that stems a lot from, um, from my childhood. And we all have a past. We all have things that define us. I never blamed my past. I looked at it as, as it is, it, it was what it was. It made a lot of sense why behaviors or would happen when you have a certain type of a past. And I remember Darren Hardy at Summit, which was a huge moment for me because I had listened to his audios quite, uh, quite many times and seeing him on stage and when he said the words, asked the audience, you know, he talked about his childhood and he didn't have a very good childhood and he said to the audience, did, did you have a good childhood? Did you have a happy childhood? Well, I hope you didn't and everybody laughed. The point being was that he said your childhood, your your history, your past, whatever you had to overcome built muscles on you. Those muscles at that time were being built, but you didn't know what they were for. Later on, they would be used in life to help you become a stronger person. And it's totally, absolutely true. So I, I raced and I focused on a lot of other things. I decided to run a full marathon. I ended up getting injured, trained for three months, ended up getting injured several weeks before the full marathon. I thought I had a stress fracture, it wasn't. But when the doctor looked at me and the doctor told me that I would not be running the, the full marathon, I literally um, lost it. And if you can relate to something you know, whether, no matter what it is that you try and try and you, and you train and you sacrifice and all of a sudden you're not able to do it, um, it hit me very, very hard. I ended up deciding later on that maybe later on that same evening that I would try to see if I could do the half marathon. And all of a sudden I ended up in the emergency room that night with what we found out after being hospitalized over the weekend that I had a ruptured um, cyst on my ovary. Now, if that wasn't the good Lord telling me that I was not meant to run this race, that I needed to slow down, that I needed to wake up and smell the roses, I don't know what is. I mean, literally, to go from the doctor's office that day with a stress fra with a 
it was in a, a torn tendon, but yet thinking, how am I going to do this? I can do this. I'm still going to do this. That is the personality of someone not quite healthy. And the hospital thing happened. So after the weekend, I came home. For five weeks, I wasn't able to run or work out. I went into a slight depression. And I had been there before after I lost my father. And it's not a pretty place. In walks Beachbody Clean Free Eat Challenge that my upline coach, Cher Nath, was doing on Facebook. I did not know Cher. I only knew her, uh, I knew of her through Kathy Chenier, now one of my coaches. She said Cher's having this free five day eat clean challenge. And at that point I thought, what, what else can I do? I need to, if I don't get something under control, it's only gonna go downhill more. And, and I, I, I needed something. So I took her up on the clean eat challenge, felt amazing because in that time I had gained about almost 10 pounds seriously in like five weeks because that's all I wanted to do was when you're depressed, you just want to eat really. And um, that's what I was doing. So felt wonderful. Cher contacted me and she said, you know, have you thought of coaching because you were so motivating in this group? You know, I, I would love to talk to you about coaching, and, you know, and I'm going to be doing a challenge group. Are you interested in doing a program? And at the time I, I was like, yeah, I, I think I'll do a program. Um, and we talked about programs and what I like to do. I like to do strength training. So I ended up doing Shailene Johnson's um, Shailene Extreme, which was amazing, awesome, loved it program. A couple of weeks into it, Cher talks to me again about being a coach. And I said, you know what? I love this Shakeology. I, I will do it because... I can get discounted Shakeology. I mean, who wouldn't want discounted Shakeology? Keep in mind, no clue that I wanted to coach at all. And the day that I walked in to meet with Cher, I received a text from someone who was a discounted coach for Shakeology. And basically, she had told me that being a coach for Beachbody is a bunch of baloney basically is what she said but not in those those type of words and she advised that I don't get sucked into it and that that it's not all that it portrays to be well I ignored the tax obviously and I met with Sharon so I said okay let's sign me up and that was like the third week in December and I had I had an idea. I thought, you know, at first, when you decide that you're going to start coaching, you have all of this insecurities. I thought, probably with many other coaches, why would anyone listen to me or want to listen to me or think that I know anything about nutrition or fitness? I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not a nutritionist you know, um, those type of things. I thought, what do I have? What could, what, why would somebody want to come to me? And, you know, you think about that. And I started Coach Basics. And I was doing Coach Basics for about a week and thought, well, you know what, I'm going to put it out there. We'll see what happens. Well, I think I had ended up with 10 people, um, clients challengers that I had signed in, in December and then we started my first challenge group in January and so I kind of just dove right in and you know you build your wings as you're you know flying and that's basically what I did but I also felt that if people are believing in me and trusting in me to help them get healthier, this 
I must have something. There must be something in there. You know, I, I had specific people that I wanted to help, that I wanted to see get healthier. I had two people specifically in mind. And I thought, if I can coach two people to getting healthier, I, that's it. I'd be happy. Wow. Did that um, go crazy after that. So... Again, I went from this challenge group in January, and you know the the challengers in the group were telling their friends, and it was just a, kind of a snowball effect, and it was crazy, and it was wild, and and then what happened was in February or in January, I signed a couple of my challengers as coaches to get the discounted shako. So they could continue their programs and then it was I I had a conversation with Michael Greenberg and that conversation changed my life and I had a new perspective on myself and on my capabilities and you know when you become a coach and I I tell my clients this who are thinking about coaching how much personal development can change your life it changed my life in so many ways I don't know where it had been prior to Beachbody I never ever thought of picking up a personal development book I read people magazine that's what I read <laughs> um, so it I, I don't you know, it came again, one of those things that it came at the right time in my life when I needed it. And I dove into it, and with Michael's help, I ended up understanding more of how the coaching business side of it worked. And I still have trouble completely understanding the whole volume thing, you know, but that's okay. Um, I will get there and but you know in the beginning you're so overwhelmed with coaching because you're doing this and you're doing that and you're trying to learn this and I, I always tell my coaches now I remember feeling so completely overwhelmed and if I if I can tell new coaches anything is just to calm down and take Take it into bits. Don't, you know, you don't need to grab a olive, grab all of the apples. Grab a couple of apples at a time. Um, I, you can get overwhelmed just like you do with your own fitness program or your nutrition. What happens when you get overwhelmed? You want to quit. So, you know, Everybody has their own coaching style. Everybody takes on what they can take on themselves. I just want to. I just want to let those new coaches just hang in there. It'll come around. You will understand more as time goes on. As they always say, it is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Coaching is a marathon. You are not going to become successful overnight. You are not going to be. You know, it. It is. It's a process. So I went from coaching and I and I dove in and I worked hard. I worked after my day job. I worked at a regular job during the day um, as an office assistant four days a week. I worked beach body at nighttime, long hours. I worked at the weekend, long hours. I worked at my day off all day, but I did it because I loved it. It wasn't work to me. I mean, I would I would listen to videos. You know, these are some some tips for you new coaches. Go to YouTube, download the top coaches YouTube, save them. When you're getting ready in the morning, that's what I used to do. I would 35 minutes. You can listen to. The, the team calls you can listen to any 
any learning, there's so much in the coach basics in the success. They're always constantly having videos in there. Anytime when you're doing nothing that requires your brain or your full attention, go ahead and, and listen to that stuff. You know, it's there for you. I promise it will, it will help. Listening to those self audio books, never, ever did I, I ran for, when I trained for two years, that's all I did was listen to music. Do you know what I listen to now? Darren Hardy, John Maxwell, uh, Brian Tracy, Joel Osteen. That is what I listen to. I, I, I don't really listen to music anymore. And what value it has added into my life. What value I am able to give to other people from this. And you know, I, I, it's just so amazing to me. Here I am at my age, going to be 44 at the end of the month. And, and I've, I've never, I'm opening up to all of this incredible things that I never knew, or maybe I, I closed an eye to or closed my mind to. So I guess that's my story, and now I am, I, I had a goal of qualifying for leadership. Michael Greenberg helped me accomplish that. My team has amazing, amazing coaches. These women coach from their hearts. They, I, I can't say enough about them. Um, here is, oops, there we are. So those are my three coaches that went to summit with me. It was our first summit. Obviously, um, those coaches are joined in January and February. And the, and, and without my team, we all know you are where you are because of your team, you know, and I wouldn't be anywhere without my team, so I am truly blessed, truly grateful, um, love them to pieces, and I am totally not going to cry. So, Summit. Let's talk about Summit for a minute. Wow. If you have not gotten on the wait list, you need to get on. You need to get on. I, I, am, I, hope, I hope that whoever wants to go to Summit for coaches, that they can, that they get there because that was the game changer. That was definitely a game changer for me. And before I went to Summit, my coaching months, each, as each month progressed, I did grow more belief in myself, more belief in my team. If you knew the things that I would say back when I started coaching, um, which I'm not going to talk about right now because it's quite embarrassing, but I, if, if you knew that person, then you, you wouldn't think it's related to this person here, two completely different people where they're at. And um, I went into Summit thinking before I went to Summit, I knew I was going to start qualifying and my goal was to at that time go, go to start at Summit. And ironically, Thursday at Summit was the day that I hit two star. And I say that because that was a goal for me and where I wanted to be at because I had a why. I had a why as far as a business why and my why was I wanted to leave my job. Again, not so much that I didn't like my job, but when I fell into Beachbody and it completely changed me. I found passion that I never knew I, I had, that I never knew I could 
give to somebody. And I was adamant whatever I needed to do to be able to do this full time, I need to do that. I need to to be able to use this passion and and help others, help my team. And I couldn't it, it was just I, I had no choice. I, I, I knew this was what I wanted to do and I had to do whatever I wanted, whatever I could to get there. Going to Summit only added the topping, the cherry on top because I, 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 I still get so very emotional talking about it because unless you are there, it's hard to describe and I even want my discount coaches, discount coaches to go, because it's not just about, yes, you learn about the business and you learn so many things, but do you know what? You also are surrounded by all positive people, inspiring people. <clears throat> Sorry, just a minute. Um, <clears throat> people that all have the same goals, people that all want to help people, to be around 10,000 of those people is very, it's, it's overwhelming and it's crazy and it's amazing. And I know that I, when I saw Diana Nyad and, and I knew she was going to be speaking at Summit, another light bulb went off and said, you know what, this is, this is meant to be. I watched Diana and I had with her swim. I was pretty much obsessed with her because I could not believe she could do that. I couldn't believe she spent 30 years of not giving up. I mean, really? And I was going to be able to listen to this woman. I was moved beyond I don't know, it, I can't even, can't find the words. And I left Summit emotionally drained, but also I spent the plane ride back with my coach tracking out her diamond road. <laughs> and because that's just how I am. And anyway, I, I, I just could live, eat and breathe Beachbody. And, and coming off of that, you, you know, you are just, you're in a, in a phase for a while. And, and I remember Kelly Greenman telling me that, you know, you need to decompress when you get home. Heck, I think it was two weeks because I was still crying about it because I'm just, I get so emotional about it. And I was so, it, it was so inspiring and uplifting and it, I just I urge you to get on the wait list to urge your coaches to get on the wait list please do that um, I, just please do that no matter if you have to fit 20 people in a, in a room you know you got to get there and that was something I never ever thought I would attend when I first started coaching and I'm so glad that I was told, you know, you need to get, you need to sign, you need to get on. And, um, and I am glad I did. So anyway, I, w I just wanted to touch base on Summit and get on that wait list. And you need to have faith that it will all work out because it will all work out. And um, just, just huge, um, huge game changer for me. A couple of things that I wanted to share with you, again, that helps me and helped me grow was, of course, personal development. You know, we talk about that. I, I, I think that we as coaches, when you start out coaching, your belief in yourself grows and that comes from many things. It comes from personal development. It comes from your challengers thanking you for 
you know, being able to fit into a pair of jeans they haven't been able to fit into, you know, um, other challengers, you know, I've been able to decrease my diabetic medications. All of that just inspires you and makes you believe in yourself more. You, your team believes in you, you know, so I, I, it's a belief the, the more you believe, you know, the, the actions go along with that. And um, I, that was just huge. You know, the personal development was huge for me. I now spend, you know, like I said, I do the audio whenever I'm in the car, I'm getting ready for work in the morning cleaning, anything like that. There's no reason why you cannot get any audio um, down and playing. We talk about 10 minutes a day. I remember being a new coach and thinking 10 minutes a day, okay, so that shouldn't be too hard. And I started reading that before I went to bed. Well, pretty soon you're just going to bed and forgetting to read, even though it's only 10 minutes, and all of a sudden you go a few days without reading, and you know what? I kind of feel a little bit like a downer. I'm, I'm not feeling that. Oh, have you read your personal development? Mm, no. So that is an absolute, that, that is a deal breaker for me. And I tell my coaches, you have to be, I have one that listens to her PD every time she mows the lawn and that rocks, Deb, because she's mows for like two hours. So, but it, it, you have, don't tell me you don't have the time to get that personal development in. You make the time. You schedule the time. You set your alarm 15 minutes earlier in the morning. You know, it, it, you take your lunch break. You eat your lunch. You schedule 15 minutes of your lunch break for that personal development. It just really, really, it, it was, it's huge for me personally and has helped me grow, which in turn has helped me um, as a coach, as a leader. Also, being organized. You need to be organized. I know that in the beginning you're so overwhelmed with many different things going on and you're trying to, I'm old school, I like pen and paper. I don't have everything typed in on the computer. I don't have it saved on my phone because I like pen and paper. For some, I, that's just how I am. And I would have post-it notes. I would have like five different notebooks around with things written down. But you, being organized, it, it's kind of interesting. You know how they always say someone that has, his, has a clutter-free house, is, they carry themselves kind of different the, the way they're more organized. And it's actually true. They're not in, you know, disarray or, you know, lots of things going on because they're organized. Everything kind of has its place. And you're together. You got it together. So I just want to express how important it is to be organized. You know, your team, your upline, there are so many documents out there, files to help you keep everything organized. You know, your right down to your bat to your Kendra Fletcher is posting constantly um, schedules, time schedules. There, there's so much out there for you to, to help you become organized in that sense. So I, I think you really, really need to be, get that under control. And, and have a system, a system that works for you. Use that power hour. I will actually be honest with you. And until Jeff um, Croman Hope from corporate, did I pronounce his last name correctly? Hopefully. Um, until he said to me, Nicole, you need to use that power hour. Because what I was doing was spending three hours doing that and it easily could be combined down to one hour. So there's a, you know, you can find that, that sheet at the power hour and it tells you, you know, Scotty's got great, great ones out there. His 10, 10 things he does every day. You know, 
getting into that routine is key. Get being consistent with that is key. Again, just like your fitness, your own fitness and your own nutrition. Um, planning and prepping is I always am planting seeds. That is how that's how I, you know, people will ask me, well, how, how do you, you know, fortunately I've hit um, SC10 um, since I've started. My goal is obviously um, all-star. And I'm, I'm constantly planting seeds even a month in advance, especially, I mean, right now with Power 90 coming out in September, all of you coaches should be talking about that. Um, spreading the word about that, connecting with people that you think may not, would not be ready for P90X, you know, that, which, you know, is very frightening. I've had two people in the last week say to me, oh, I would never do that. I wouldn't, I would never do P90X3. I would never do P90X, you know, and um, now they have this program that's going to be coming out in September you should be talking about it. You should be spreading the word about that, you know, and, and um, so that, that is kind of how I personally go about doing that, which, which seems to be, which seems to work for me. I also keep a list separately of people remembering your contact list. You know, you have your contact list of, and you have your challenger list. Your contact list, you should be having the pe people in there that you have contacted, say, today, I contacted so-and-so. You know what? When school gets back, give me a call then. And I keep that all in a certain calendar, and I will put down on a date when I need to contact that person again. I was listening or reading somewhere. One of the top coaches were saying how many people are we're just so busy that we forget and so there's nothing wrong when they say contact me in September contact me next month contact them you know um, because if they say they're going to contact you they forget because they're busy you know and if you contact them and they say they're not ready, then they're not ready, and that's okay. You know, at least you've gotten a hold of them. They may say, you know, next month might be better. Contact them again next month until they actually tell you, you know, I'm not interested. You know, then obviously, you know, then then you leave it. But I've had people from February that I check in with every month and actually two of them I just signed and um, and and that's from all those months ago because now they're ready and now they're able to so anyway I just wanted to share that with you is that you should have that contact list you should have the people in there your maybes your let me think about it those ones and and following up with them again just like your leads is you should be on those leads every day. That is what I personally do, is I get a, I contact those leads that day, sending them the email, then sending them the text. Now I just purchased um, business postcards and I'm going to go through my whole contact list one day and just sit down and send them all out postcards because a lot of them you can't get a hold of or they don't get a hold of you. But I personally treat my leads as as a, a real client, and I try to do the best that I can do. And I've had some I've had some great results, amazing results with my leads, and um, some have turned into coaches. So I, I wanted to share that with you. Also, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was my big thing, which is. I, for those of you who do not know this, I will be resigning from my job of 20 years on August 29th. will be my last day. And I felt it was important 
for several reasons to talk about this, and I haven't even shared this with um, Fit for Life group yet, but I, I can't tell you how, how many times when I was starting out thinking to myself, listening to the top coaches and, you know, not even, let's say successful coaches, you know, listening to successful coaches talk about, I remember, for instance, watching Kendra Fletcher's video when she was able to resign from her job. Holy cow. Very emotional. Um, watching that, you think, I thought to myself, that could never be me. That's amazing. I could never do that. I'd never be able to do that. There's that disbelief again, you know, and the other part of that is you look at them and you think that it's out of your realm, that it's out of your capabilities, that it won't happen to you. And when you hear the top coaches give their speech, you know, when they're on stage at Summit, and I would go on YouTube, Wayne's, I, oh my gosh, his was just emotional um, from 2012, 13. Um, he, you know, listening to them, and you're, and they say the same thing. I didn't believe. I never thought that this would happen to me. I never thought I'd be able to do, you know. And you sit there and you think that, you know, you think, I, I thought that. I, I thought that a lot. And all of a sudden, you know what? I started achieving things because I started believing things. When I started believing things, I started envisioning things. I had dream after dream after dream, and all I thought about was attending leadership. I made that happen, and I believe with all my heart that the power of your mind, your positivity, can do amazing things, and it can help you do amazing things. So belief is so highly important, guys, and... Um, not being afraid to set your goals high. Don't be, af don't be afraid. So getting back to my resignation. I never thought at my age, and when I sent Scotty a message about what I was going to talk about for the call tonight, and I wrote it down, his exact words were this. I, I, I told him what I was going to touch base on and talk about. And he, he said to me, he said, um, he said, um, you could talk about your age. There aren't too many successful 40 plus top coaches. So that may be a great topic to hit on. So Yay, Scotty, 44. And, um, you know, my goal is to hit elite and I will get there. And I want to tell people that who says a 44 year old can achieve that? Who said a 50 year old can achieve that? You know, who said, who is anybody to say what you can or cannot set your mind to and do? Age should not hold you back on anything. Your physical appearance, your physical should not hold you back on anything. You work hard for the things, you will achieve it. You will get there. I promise. I guarantee you will. So that was one of my that was one of my things. I have a 14 year old starting high school her first year. And all I could think about was what I really be able to take my 14 year old to school every day? Am I really going to be able to attend her events as she's going through her last years of school? They're going to, she's going to be gone in four years. 
and as we all know, um, and, and my coach Sue is going through this as her daughter leaves soon for college, that time goes by so fast. And if I can be at home, do something that I am extremely passionate about, that I love, that I believe I was meant to do, and be there for my children and be able to be there for them their last years, their you know, difficult teenage years, um, why wouldn't you try? Why would you not try to do that? You know, guys, I, I just, I, I sit here and I cannot believe that I am on a Scotty Hobbs call. I, I think about I think about where my life has come and it's surreal and I am so incredibly grateful and I know that there is something greater out there for each and every one of us. You find it and you go for it no matter what and you don't be scared and you don't let anybody hold you down and you make it happen. So with that being said, I have a call to action. And the call to action, and, and I put this, this image up here for, um, because it, it, it depicts kind of what I've been able to accomplish me personally. And, um, and so I, I wanted to put that up there for your for your call to action, which is post something that you have done in the last 30 days that you were afraid to do or that you thought you wouldn't be able to do. You know, um, whether it is personal, um, fitness-wise, um, nutrition, um, business wise whether it's got to do with with the beach body or not whether it has to do with anything um, I want you to think about that and think about what what you have been able to do that you you didn't think you'd be able to do and um, go ahead and post that and and that is your call to action tonight and um, I'm so glad that I Save the tears for the last thing instead of bawling uncontrollably throughout the whole um, call. And I am so at ease right now. And um, I just want to say thank you for everybody tuning in. And I hope you all make the best of, of yourself and um, for everyone else. And um, God bless you and, and have a great night.